For Criminal Media's Policy, I'm Sane Lamini. Joining me today is Umgeni Municipality Mayor and Democratic Alliance's candidates for KZN and Premier Chris Papas. Congratulations are in order, uh, Mr. Papas, on your nomination as the DA KZN uh, Premier candidate. This must be a huge honor uh, as a person who is so dearly loved in the province, especially in the Umgeni Municipality. Are you up to the task? Uh, to take up this position and would you say that your current position has sharpened you to be a leader at a provincial scale? So so thank you very much for having me um, and for the kind words. Uh, yes, I, I'm, I'm I'm incredibly excited for the opportunity. I think there, there's so much happening in South African politics at the moment as our, as our democracy continues to, to mature. And uh, KZN is really, um, you know, a, a playground it's at play for um, for the 2024 national or general elections. Um, and yes, I believe that that I, I am up for for the task, or up for the challenge. Um, I've served in a metro. I've served in the legislature, uh, and now I, I run a government. You know, it's much smaller than than the provincial government, but uh, you know, the principles are are the same. I believe that I, I'm educated in the right field. I'm young enough to appeal to sort of the middle generation, but old enough to have the experience and what it takes to to run and to lead. So yes, it's an incredible weight. Um, it's incredible expectation, but it's going to be it's going to be exciting. KZN is is going to be an exciting place over the next couple of months. Mm. And uh, I've read that political analyst in Tigelelo Breakfast has said that. Um, this is going to be difficult for voters uh, to favor you as KZN is a conservative province. How would you respond to that? I think, okay, well, separate. I think, yes, KZN is a, is a relatively conservative uh, province. Uh, but I also think that um, what people have shown largely is, is that they want to vote for delivery. So when you look at polling around what, what's important to people, uh, things around our identity usually fall a lot lower. Um, you know, not that they're not important, but they that people want to vote for delivery. They want to vote for action. They want to vote for a proven track record. Uh, and I think that's uh, that is what people are looking for uh, in this election. The province is also battling uh, to fix issues relating to flooding and even the July 2021 riot. What is your strategy to make sure that these issues um, are done with? So firstly, let's talk about the, the riots. Uh, the, the riots happened largely because there's, there's large unemployment, there's political instability, uh, and there is a failure of the state to capacitate in intelligence and security uh, mechanisms. So if think we can tackle those things in the province, then we will start to reduce the risk of that happening again, with unemployment being the most important out of those. So if we're un unable to get our economy moving, if we're unable to unclog and unblock the blockages, if uh, the roads in the rural areas are, are not working, if our small towns are failing, then we will not be able to create jobs uh, in this province. And then the second part around the, the, the floods. You know, we heard about a, a billion rand uh, I don't know if you recall, there was a billion rand that was promised to this this province for uh, fixing things. To date, we don't know what has happened to to that money. I'm sure it will take a commission of inquiry for us to find out. Um, but, you know, my municipality didn't get one cent and we were very badly hit. And many, many places in this in this province didn't get any money. It all went to Eteguini. But when you go to Eteguini, you see sewage running into the rivers. You see all the things that we, we know happen with failed service delivery. So the point of that to answer your question is to say, if we stop stealing the money, if we make sure that the contractors that are employed can do the work, uh, and if we do proper oversight and management, then I think we can start to to turn these, these effects of, of global warming and storms around. Can you now outline for our viewers um, your work that you've done so far for the communities uh, in the Umgeni municipality in the 22 months, uh, which has now led to this nomination? Sure. So, uh, as you say, it's only been 22 months. Um, you know, I inherited 28 years of one political party. So we are on the eve of our, our two, year in, two years in government, so, so almost halfway. Um but, you know, we, we believe that we've made some progress. It's, it's not perfect by far. Uh, you know, I'd be lying to you if I said this municipality was perfect. We've still got a long way to go. But 
I believe that we've made progress. You know, we've bought more equipment and plant. We've hired more staff. Um, we have reduced our debt. Uh, we're offering f- more free basic services to people. Our finances are stable uh, and service delivery is, is being rolled out. Uh, so I do think we've made progress um, uh, and there's a long way to go. But I think as the decisions and, and you know, the foundation that we're laying becomes stronger, you'll see more and more happening. You've already told us yourself that you are also appealing to the youth uh, in the province. I'm sure that you've realized that uh, most of them are hoping that you have uh, their interest at heart when it comes to creating an environment that will create employment opportunities. What are your plans uh, in this regard, Mr. Propas? Sure, yes. So, I mean, again, you see, this is why you said, uh, how, how, you know, where do I fit in? I think there's a young generation that has said, well, here's a young leader that that understands what we're going through uh, and has the capability to deliver. So I think there's a number of things. Um, I think that our young people are not skilled for the future economy. In other words, we have people who are coming out of matric and and the piece of paper that they hold is is not worth very much. So we need to make sure that we have rapid upskilling programs in key sectors within our province. So, for example, tourism. Tourism is a quick win. Um, you know, at the moment, you, you, the roads that lead to tourism destinations are, are, are failing. There's no signs that point to our, our monuments and our destinations. Um, and then the economy is not able to grow. But then again, when, you know, when those places are growing, we need baristas and we need chefs and we need, you know, people who can, who can look after visitors. You know, so everyone is studying a public admin. I think it is a, a public admin at a lot of our, our technicons because the hope is that everyone will be employed by government. But at the end of the day, that's not going to happen. So skilling people for the future economy is incredibly important. Why are we not teaching people about robotics and tech and coding so that we become a destination of choice for those sorts of investments? We have incredible logistics in, in, in uh, this province, so logistics potential. Why are we not training uh, people around that particular sector? But the other thing then is to support people who have good ideas. Now, we, we have a number of institutions that are supposed to support uh, young entrepreneurs, but that, that's not happening. Money and resources are usually given to uh, you know select few. Now, I was with AFASA, which is the African Farmers Association, uh, and they were watching us with a project with small-scale farmers, and they were incredibly grateful for the work that we are doing with farmers because we're we're sustainably bringing people through, not based on political affiliation, but based on their ability to to sustainably grow their businesses and then provide support. So I think we need to do more of that, Uh, not just these nice events where we go hand out tons and tons of things, but actively have, have entrepreneurship programs that we then support through to success. And then following your nomination, uh, Mr. Papas, we've seen reports uh, that uh, there are now issues with regards to allegations of nepotism and corruption placed before you. Now, we've seen that the former DA leader, which I think you know, Siswem Kunu, has filed a complaint uh, with the Public Protector's Office uh, with this issue, uh, alleging that a tourism contract was awarded to your former fiancé. Why do you say uh, that this is just a smear campaign by the ANC? Uh, for a number of reasons. Um, you know, Sizwe usually sings for his supper, as we say. Um, you know, we should investigate his cases and things that are still open and pending. We should look at how he gets money from uh, industrial development boards and things like that. But let's put that aside. To answer your question, um, there's a number of... Uh, irregularities and mistakes with what uh, he's accusing. So firstly, there are no tourism contracts in this in this municipality. They, 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 they don't exist. Uh, so I don't know what contract he's talking about. The second thing is that the, the company that he claims to have got a contract was only registered in August 2023, which is a month and a half ago. Uh, so it's impossible for someone to have got contracts two years ago, as he claims, but the business was only registered uh, a month and a half ago. The next thing is that the so-called company, um, it's actually a community tourism organization, which which exists all over the country, and municipalities support them in terms of tourism development. Um, that particular, the particular one that they are mentioning, which is Umgeni Tourism, is one of three that gets funding from our municipality, uh, and these tourism organizations get a, a month a monthly grant of ten thousand rand, and that's to to run their uh, their what do you call it, operations. 
Uh, and then every now and again, they come along with a request for events. So all three of our tourism organizations have received funding for uh, events that we as a municipality believe add value to the tourism attraction of the area. Uh, and all the paperwork for, for that is, is available. The other thing is that there's no, there's no uh, record on file at the municipality of any payments made to, a, to the company that you know, they're alleging. There's been no payments made to a, a company called G, GSC or GCS from this municipality. So this thing has already been covered in our local media. Um, it was done about a year ago. It was covered in our local media and the local journalists investigated it and they saw that it was just false claims. But now, uh, as you say, the timing of it, I've just been announced as premier and they're looking for reasons because they are, are scared of me. The other thing it's important to note is where are these allegations actually coming from? You know, what evidence is there to, to support them? Credible journalism looks into the evidence to be able to, to support, you know, some sort of article. Um, Mr. Mkunu has based his allegations on a nameless and faceless, uh, I think it's a social media site, um, that has produced no information to date. Uh, so, you know, people say, well, well, why aren't you refuting it? I don't know what I'm actually refuting other than to say I haven't benefited and neither has my ex fiance which uh, we're no longer together for a number of months. Mm. Now, uh, we've seen that uh, you are trying uh, so hard to make sure that um, people in Umgeni are not badly affected by load shedding, which, which is crippling our economy. And we've seen even the DA in the Western Cape also trying to address the issue. Do you now think that you could rescue KZN from load shedding? I think, it'll, yes, we can, and we have to try. Um, it's not going to be overnight. Um, you know, electricity generation is very complicated and very expensive. But at the moment, our provincial government is doing no nothing proactive um, and speedily to try and resolve this issue. So whereas, for example, in the Western Cape, the Western Cape government is providing generators for municipalities for, for uh, sewage and water plants. They are funding uh, solar installations on municipalities and things like that. They are championing and pushing policy and legislation against the national government to, to allow them to do these sorts of things. Our provincial government is, is silent on the matter. You know, many municipalities are struggling to, to pump sewage and water, and there's been very little to no assistance from the provincial government. On top of that, there's no real implementation of a policy to decouple our province from the failing ESCOM supply. So, yes, I believe with a dedicated effort, um, we can then join provinces like the Western Cape in their fight against ESCOM uh, to try and get quick wins in terms of uh, supply to the grid. And the province is also dealing with issues related to crime. Uh, we've seen shootouts in different taverns, especially in uh, Umsunduzi municipality. And uh, the current premier is also trying to pull all the stops, but she is currently not winning the battle. How would you tackle uh, such issues? Yeah, I don't think our premier is going to, to win the battle. She, she said she's going to give people panic buttons, and that was her solution to crime. Uh, and we had a demonstration of the panic buttons and all it is is a button that makes like a, a whistling noise, like a, uh, like a loud noise. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's her solution to, to crime. I think she further said that she's going to install cameras all over the province. Uh, you just have to go to Etiquini and you see something ridiculous, like only 20% of the cameras are, are working. So it's one thing to talk about things, but implementation and then management of those is different. Um, but I think the, here's a couple of things that we can do. So one, we have to push for the devolution of power to provinces. In other words, the, the law currently says that the national minister can give provinces policing powers. Uh, and you would wonder why the national minister is not doing that, considering we have the this, this scourge of crime. So that we must push for. The second thing is that we actually need boots on the ground. Um, you know, we have police stations who, that are, are largely empty with no vehicles and no members to, to deal with the issues leads to demoralization, leads to all sorts of things in the, in the communities and in the police. So the Western Cape government put 1,100 new police officers on the ground. Uh, they call them LEAP officers. Uh, and that, that's a provincially funded program. Our, our, our provincial government hasn't done that. So that's what we can do, do as well. The next thing is to unclog the issues around crime intelligence and, uh, and then forensics. We can unclog those two. We start to support the criminal justice system because there's fighting crime and then there's the justice system. 
at the moment, those those two systems are not talking to each other. So you arrest people and they don't go to jail or there's no there's no punishment for their crime. So for us to unlock that um, will be critically important. The last thing is then partnerships. We must have active partnerships with community-based uh, policing organizations. Uh, we must support them with torches and vests and, and lights and radios, uh, more especially in areas that are far from police stations. So those are, that are in the, the rural areas that are far from from uh, urban areas, uh, then I think we will start to see a, a crime turning around. And we know that uh, the province is, is a very um, popular, especially when it comes to parties like the IFP and the ANC. So will you be, are you going to be willing to partner with either of these parties should it uh, happen that maybe you need them to get uh, the position? So we've already said we won't work with the the ANC. Um, it, it it fundamentally is not changing itself. Uh, uh, President Ramaphosa promised a new dawn and reform, none of which we've seen. Things have actually got worse. Um, mm-hmm. So we cannot work with with that organisation as it stands. Um, however, we have started to forge a a good partnership with the IFP. We are both independent organisations, and we we have our own mandates and agendas, uh, and we must hold each other accountable. I mean, that's what politics is about. However, we are doing, we are, we are forging a partnership where we can do that in a constructive way, where we can hold each other accountable, but still try and deliver services uh, in the interests of a long-term goal, which is to take over the province from uh, from the failing ANC. And lastly, my question to you, Mr. Papas, is that the DA and the EFF have at, have at times uh, put pressure on the budget allocation uh, for the Zuru Royal Household. Do you think that uh, you are best placed now to make sure that the Royal Household budget uh, is well managed? Yes, absolutely. Um, I, I, I think budget management, whether you in the Zuru Royal Household or in a municipality or in your own home, is incredibly important and the principles are are the same. You know, I've had some quite uh, constructive engagements with uh, Isilo Samabanda, who is really pushing for uh, the Zulu monarchy to become something something different. In other words, to be a driver of, of economic growth and job creation, in particularly in, in rural areas. Uh, and I think as a, as a young king, uh, as a visionary king, he's got some great ideas and needs the support of the provincial government to implement that. At the moment, the provincial government treats the Zulu monarchy as a as a vote winning mechanism. In other words, they go there when they need him. They threaten um, the royal family w- with their funding uh, when they don't play by the, the government's rules. Instead of respecting them and working to actively develop the sustainability around that particular household and to restore dignity to it, to 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 bring back a dignity to the to the Zulu royal household as opposed to to treating it as a political football. Thank you very much for your time and we wish you all the best and we'll be following uh, up uh, as you campaign uh, for the upcoming elections. Thank you. I look forward to seeing you guys again. There was Umgeni Municipality Mayor and Democratic Alliance's candidates for KZN Premier Chris Papas.